Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription. I am from the Open Blessing Church, Nairobi headquarters, and I'm here to speak the Word of God into our lives by the grace of God. I believe that we are blessed. I believe the Lord continues to minister to us in a special way. And I'm excited as always because I know that God has got something that he wants to speak into our lives by the grace of God. I want to pray and then we'll hear what God has to speak into our lives by the grace of God. Good morning. Everlasting and ever living God in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to thank you again this morning. Thank you, Father, you've given us another privilege and time to hear that which you want to speak into our lives by the grace of God. I therefore humble myself before you and we are asking that, Lord Jesus, you're making a way through our hearts, O oh God, that, my Father, you can make us to rise from one level to another by the grace of God. I pray for anointing. I pray for understanding in the name of Jesus. May the name of the Lord be glorified in this session this morning for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and good morning. Now, I want to speak about a subject that I've titled, Enter the Ark. Enter the Ark. Now, I want to read several scriptures uh, to qualify my point. I want to read the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter number 7. We're going to read a number of verses there. We'll skip others and read others. By the end of the day, we'll bring them all together to make meaning into this message, enter the ark. Now, verse number 1, then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your households, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of the animals that are unclean, a male and his female. Also seven each of the birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of the earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain, on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. Verse number 13. On the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and three wives of his sons with them entered the ark, and they and every beast after its kind, uh, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth after its kind, every bird after its kind, and every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah by two by two of all flesh, in which is the bread, so that those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. Verse number 23. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air, that they were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive and the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days praise the name of the lord now i want to bring to our understanding that it came to a point where god instructed noah to build the ark we must ask ourselves very deep questions why god pushed or encouraged Noah to build the ark. It can only be found in the book of Genesis chapter number 6 and verse number 13. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. 
For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. It gives instruction and everything else. Now, the Bible expressly repeats many times that Noah did as God had instructed. Now, I want to bring to understanding, child of God, this morning, that it had not rained before on the earth. And so, as Noah took the responsibility to preach the gospel of the ark, many people did not anticipate or expect that what Noah was talking about was going to pass. They had never seen rain before. They knew that the earth had got its issues. The Bible has been very categorical to us. There were a lot of violence that was in the land at that time. And God purposed to destroy the earth. Now, I want you to know that God has always opened his hands and his heart to the people. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. God has always opened his hands to people who move or decide or purpose to move towards him. So for many years, Noah preached the gospel of the ark. Now, when we fast forward and we go to verse number seven, we clearly see now God still giving Noah the instruction how people would get into the ark. Now, something fundamental here that we need to know. We might not have seen it before. We might not have encountered before. But there are things because God is God. He has got the capacity to do everything he sets out to do by the grace of God. And so the ark was complete. People were wondering, why, how would this ark even float? They had never seen any rain before, but the doors were open. Noah did not stop anybody from accessing the ark. Now, this is what I want you to know, child of God. There is no price you can pay to get to God. It was paid up at Calvary. It is not about your self-righteousness. It's not about your intellect or excellence in speech. No. The price had been paid. Noah had built the ark. What was required for people to be safe was to enter the ark. Would you imagine that Noah preached all those years, but he got into the ark very few souls, in fact, just members of his family, his three sons, their wives, Noah himself and his wife, eight souls. After massive preaching, only eight people got into the ark. And sometimes we confuse grace with numbers. But I want you to know this morning, I invite you to enter into the ark, to enter into the faith, acknowledging that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and me. Enter the ark. Now, people had never seen such a kind of rain before. But the truth is, it indeed rained. It rained and the whole earth was flooded and the ark began to float on the water. What a massive, massive water mass. I want to invite us to a place where we can make up our mind and focus a dimension of grace where we are believing everything that God is saying concerning our lives we might not understand the logic behind it. We might not even understand the push behind it. But one thing we know that Jesus died on the cross for you and me. Enter the ark. Now, God knew that if he did not close the door of the ark himself, then Noah was going to open the door. 
He is going to have mercy upon the people and they will be allowed into the ark. So God locked the ark. Now, I want you to know that the Bible tells us it's appointed for a man to die once and then judgment. As long as we have got the opportunity to make up our decision and our minds to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace is available. You can make the decision today. You can say, I'm not going to do this thing anymore. I am jumping into the ark. I am getting into the ark. I am choosing to focus and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Get into the ark. Do not be deceived by temporal pleasure. Do not be deceived by the ways of the world. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? How shall we escape? How will you escape if you don't give your life to your maker? How do you think you'll escape? That period of the floods, many people rubbished the thoughts of Noah. Many people could have mocked Noah. But the day the rains came, they began to think clearly about the things that Noah had been saying all along and that the reality had come. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we need to reconsider our lives and jump into the ark. You might be a successful business person. You might be an intellectual of repute. You might be a good man or good woman. You might be successful in your career. You might even be without a lot of wealth. All these dimensions and facets of life, we might be, that's where we are. But I invite you to this place. I invite you to this opportunity for us to enter the ark. In our context, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can correct your life. Somebody said, God is not, you know, pleased or even interested in people who have wasted their life out there. Now, because you are at the end of your life, now you want to come to the Lord. Of course, God will still accept you. But God wants you at your best. God wants us at your best, at our best. Enter the ark. This morning, I invite you to enter the ark. Enter into the brethren, the, the, the brotherhood. Enter into fellowship. The Bible tells us very simply in the book of Romans, chapter number 10. Romans, chapter number 10. I would like to read that scripture. Romans, chapter number 10 and verse number 9. Quite clear. This is how... You can enter into the ark today. Let's read from verse number 5. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend in the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes, believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Oh, hallelujah. So if you confess in your heart this morning, if you believe in your heart this morning, and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, you will be saved. Praise God. You jump into the ark. Oh, hallelujah. You can begin today. 
You can make up a decision today to live for God. I invite you to enter the ark. I invite you to the call of salvation. I invite you to give your life to Jesus. Praise the Lord. So that you can access eternal life. Praise the Lord. I invite you to enter the ark. Don't be in the fold of those who will be shut and locked out. The prize has been paid. The ark has been built. And now it is your time to enter. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help you to make up a decision. I know I'm speaking to many people who might have never ever given their lives to Jesus Christ. And if you have, continue to pray for those who have not given up their life to Jesus. Because if the door of the ark is shut, it will be difficult to redeem yourself. I invite you to enter the ark. Maybe you're out there, you're saying, Preacher, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just make this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I accept and acknowledge that I am a sinner. But today, I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for me. I ask, Lord, accept me into fellowship in your kingdom. From today, I choose to follow you and to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, that is a confession we all make when you give our life to Jesus. It is not by your strength or your power to stand. It's about him. Seed your life to God. Believe him. Find a Bible-believing church so you can grow into this journey that you have just begun. The good Lord be with you. Allow me to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for those people you have touched and caused them to confess salvation. I pray for testimony. I pray, Lord, that you're touching their lives, O oh God, that you'll sustain them, you'll keep them, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for everybody. Help us to jump into the ark in the name of Jesus Christ. For the price has been paid. The costs have been paid. Help us, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Master. I give you praise and I honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The good Lord be with you. The good Lord bless you. This has been your host and your servant, Reverend Johnston Sakwa from the Open Blessing Church Nairobi headquarters coming to you on the scripture prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, I've encouraged people to enter the ark. Come into the brotherhood of faith by believing the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. Amen and God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning by the grace of God. Amen and amen. Shalom. God bless you.